In the autumn of 1806, one of the most powerful military leaders in history triumphantly marched through the streets of Berlin. His name stood for military brilliance, and his goal was the conquest of all of Europe. The flags of Prussia were taken down, and from then on, French flags flew everywhere. Napoleon Bonaparte had just achieved one of his boldest military victories. The conquest of Berlin was not only a testament to his undeniable abilities on the battlefield, but also a turning point in the history of Europe. Today, we look at dramatic battles, political machinations, and the relentless pursuit of power and glory, and answer the question of how Napoleon was able to conquer Berlin, how his rule changed Germany, and how the Berliners freed themselves from the French. Enjoy. At the beginning of the 19th century, the Napoleonic Wars raged, during which Napoleon Bonaparte sought to extend his rule over all of Europe. These wars were a direct result of the French Revolution and its ideals, which the French army aimed to spread across Europe. Almost all of Europe, especially Austria, Russia and Great Britain, fought against the French general. However, one power remained completely neutral until the year 1805, Prussia. Although it had the reputation of a drilled military power, it initially pursued a cautious and wait-and-see foreign policy. It tried to maintain its diplomatic neutrality, not only to protect its trade and economic interests, but also to benefit territorially from the wars of other states. The annexation of Hanover, which had been in personal union with Great Britain until then, in 1803, was an example of Prussia's attempt to take advantage of the reorganization of Europe. Moreover, Napoleon's power seemed unstoppable as he shattered the armies of his enemies piece by piece. However, after the Third Coalition War, in which Napoleon won once again, the situation was about to change so drastically that Prussia was forced to intervene. In 1806, the French dissolved the Holy Roman Empire, which had lasted for over 800 years, and established the Confederation of the Rhine, a confederation of German states under French hegemony. This action was seen by Prussia as a direct threat to its own interests and its relationship with the German states. The diplomatic relations between France and Prussia deteriorated rapidly. The latter immediately demanded a return to the borders of 1805 and the dissolution of the Confederation of the Rhine, which Napoleon categorically rejected. Thus, the Fourth Coalition War, also known as the War of Prussia, broke out, with Prussia fighting against Napoleon with the support of Great Britain, Russia and Sweden. Initially, the coalition's prospects seemed extremely good. The Prussian army, with the support of its allies, was numerically far superior to the French army. Furthermore, Prussia was extremely confident and relied on its glorious past, in which it had already defeated the French multiple times. However, times had changed. The previous battles were long past, and the Prussian army was in reality extremely inexperienced compared to the battle-hardened Grande Armée of France. There was also a lack of good generals. Additionally, tens of thousands of men were held back in the Polish territories due to fears of an uprising in the event of war. Napoleon, on the other hand, was able to gain the support of several southern German states, rapidly increasing his army to nearly 200,000 men. Moreover, the Prussian king made the fatal mistake of not waiting for reinforcements from Russia and Sweden, but advancing alone. The main Prussian army was supposed to unite with its Saxon allies in Thuringia and then launch an attack against the French. However, Napoleon got wind of the plan and began his own advance. At lightning speed, he led his Grand Armée to Thuringia to prevent the union of the two armies. Thus, within just five days, the two decisive battles at Jena and Auerstedt took place. Napoleon reached the Prussians before their union and decisively defeated the surprised main army. These battles led to the collapse of the entire Prussian army before the war had even truly begun and opened the way for the occupation of large parts of Prussia. Napoleon seized this moment to maximize his advantage. He planned a rapid advance on Berlin to force the Prussian capitulation and consolidate his control over northern Germany. Napoleon's troops moved with an unusual speed for the time. This mobility was a hallmark of his warfare and allowed him to maintain the initiative and surprise the enemy. The French army quickly covered the distance between the battlefields and Berlin, a distance of over 300 kilometers in less than two weeks. 
Thus, he arrived even before the arrival of the Prussian allies and was able to take the city almost without a fight. Moreover, the speed of the French advance left the Prussians barely any time to organize an effective defense of Berlin. They had not anticipated that the war would reach the capital. The rapid advance also intensified the demoralization of the Prussian troops and the population. Many soldiers had fled or been captured, and the leadership was disorganized. Thus, Berlin became French on the 27th of October, 1806. The fortress of Spandau was surrendered without a fight, and Friedrich Wilhelm III fled with Queen Louise and the court to Königsberg. The remaining Berlin aristocrats, officials, and military personnel also fled the capital in haste. The remaining Prussian officials fell into panic. The remaining Countess of Schwerin wrote, It was as if everything that could still seem Prussian in us had to be eradicated down to the memory. Everything resembling an eagle was removed, even the mail carriers tore their brass badges from their arms. At the art exhibition, which had been interrupted by the outbreak of the war, the busts of the king and the Tsar were hidden as best as possible in the hurry, and it was suggested that some drawings of Napoleon be quickly made. As a demonstration of his power, Napoleon even went so far as to steal the most important symbol of Prussia and Berlin, the quadriga on the Brandenburg Gate. As his first official act, he had it dismantled. He then sent it back home and displayed it as a trophy in Paris for almost seven years. To further disadvantage Prussia, he issued the Berlin Decree, which closed all European ports to English ships, the beginning of the so-called Continental Blockade. This severely impacted the economy and cut off one of its main allies. Moreover, Napoleon soon made peace with the Russian Tsar, who thus also fell away as an ally. Only due to the intercession of Alexander I did Prussia avoid complete dissolution. However, Prussia ultimately lost all territories west of the Elbe, which fell to the newly established French client states. The Polish territories of Prussia had to be ceded to the new Duchy of Warsaw. Thus, the once powerful Prussia lost about half of its territory. It also had to pay extremely high war reparations, and until these were paid, Berlin was to remain under French occupation. Napoleon was now at the height of his power. However, ultimately, the rule also had advantages. Napoleon introduced elements of the Code Seville, a modernized legal system. Furthermore, the French occupation contributed to the emergence of a strong national movement in Prussia. The resistance against French rule and occupation strengthened the sense of a shared German identity. This period also acted as a catalyst for the Prussian reforms that were introduced in the following years to modernize the military, administration and education system. It thus paved the way for Prussia's later rise as the unifier of the German states. Overall, Berlin was to remain occupied by the French for seven years. In secret, Prussia was already preparing for a new war. It quickly became clear that Napoleon was far from satisfied and was striving for more territory. However, he miscalculated in 1812 with his Russian campaign, during which his Grande Armée was almost entirely destroyed. Now was the time for a counterattack. Prussia officially declared war on France in March 1813. Austria, Great Britain and Russia also joined a new coalition. A series of battles ensued, including the battles of Lutzen, Bautzen and especially the decisive Battle of Leipzig. During the course of the war, the coalition was also able to recapture Berlin, which had already been vacated by the French. Napoleon was ultimately defeated, and Prussia, now a victorious power, sat at the table of the Congress of Vienna, which was to shape the future of Europe.